We're being joined right now by uh, Professor uh, Ahmed Banafa from San Jose State University. Uh, and Professor Banafa, thanks so much for being with us. Um, you are yourself a cybersecurity expert, and I just wanted to get, firstly, your opinion. Uh, any hallmarks of this hack stand out to you, or was this pretty cut and dry? You've seen these ransomware attacks before. They, they're following the, uh, the playbook here, which is basically, as you mentioned in the report, uh, they went after the, uh, uh, the school, the, uh, because not many schools have a very good uh, cybersecurity, you know, protection or IT system that will protect them because of the budget and because so many considerations. So that's, uh, I mean, it's an easy target for them. Okay, but what about the actions of the superintendent uh, Carvalho, uh, you know, very adamant that he was not going to go along with this, he was not going to pay that ransom. Uh, is that the guidance uh, for, you know, people who are in charge of organizations who face some of these attacks? Is that the line? You do not want to give in, you do not want to give them, uh, you know, any credence, what have you. Well, that's what the FBI actually um, supporting. They say don't pay them because number one is you have no idea if they're going to give you that decryption key that will open the files for you. Uh, number two, there is the possibility that uh, they will come back again, and and uh, and you're going to be marked as an easy target because you paid them. But but let me let me be honest with you, about two thirds of the companies and the organization that uh, attacked or being victims of the ransomware, they pay off this one because for so many reasons. One of them is instead of going through the backup and the business interruption, we can just pay, get the decryption key and move along. Yeah, Professor, I remember that that was the course of action last year when there was that major ransomware attack at some of those huge meat processing plants uh, in the meat processing industry that really... Uh, you know, made that industry come to a standstill. And so they did make those payments. And so uh, you, you do see different scenarios uh, for each particular hack. But, um, you know, let's talk about the data that, that was gleaned. We're learning from the superintendent just about an hour ago that no, uh, you know, large amounts of data were uh, obtained by the hacker. We have the name of the hacking group. They call themselves the Vice Society. Uh, this is apparently, you know, based within Russia. Uh, so let's talk about the data. Uh, are you concerned that, you know, this was very, very sensitive data that was gleaned? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, once you're in the system, you're in the system. You know, okay. I'll, I'll give you just an example about this. The weakest link in any network, in any computer uh, system is the human. So uh, one of the one of the biggest uh, tool or one of the most effective tool for the hackers to get in, in, into any system is using the phishing email, which is sending an email, you click on the attachment or the link, and they're in. And once they're in, then they can do whatever they want. They know exactly what to do because they they know the system. So this is they can just and just scoop any kind of information they want. Okay, but well, let's talk about the after effects too, Professor, uh, of a hack like this, because, you know, the superintendent, he didn't go along with the ransom. Uh, we saw what data wa was breached. Uh, how can they, I guess, guard themselves uh, against future attacks? How, how does, you know, how does law enforcement hold these criminal syndicates responsible if they can at all? Like, what happens next? Well, uh, there are multiple things here. Number one is... Uh the thing that brought the ransomware back to life is the cryptocurrency, the Bitcoin and mm. Ethereum that because in the past you have to send cash, you have to wire something. So that will be easily you can track it to, to the banking system. And now you're talking about uh, cryptocurrencies, specifically the Bitcoin. And that was easy to just send it to a wallet and that wallet will be sent to outside the United States and it's gone as you cannot, you cannot trace it back. Now, what that school can do is to... Uh, Two multiple things. Number one is improve the security by having the latest uh, firewall from the hardware and the software, update the software and train people. I mean, the the, uh, the weakest link is the problem, which is you train people, think before you click and follow the hygiene. We call it the cyber hygiene. Change your password, force them to change your password every 90 days, every 60 days, and use the two-factor authentication as a must for everybody. So there are steps people can take to at least protect themselves and make it difficult for the hackers to come back and get them. Uh, for the hackers, you know, you know they, they are in the dark web. I mean, uh, they're outside the United States. How can you reach? How can you go after them? That's going to be very difficult, you know, to do anything about that. 
Yeah, but the there is such a gap, and you would probably agree between you know a, a school district, yes, a major school district, and, and a very you know uh, wealthy, large corporation, uh, and so. The, the approaches are the same, yet the resources to, to combat and battle something like this uh, might not be as great as, you know, a major corporation. So why school districts themselves? Are they easier to penetrate? Uh, do they not have enough, you know, backing or support to respond? What did you make of that? Well, you know, one of the things is that we just came out of the pandemic and yeah. and there will be an understaff, you know, for so many of the organization and so many of the district schools and they're trying to fill some of those positions. And at the same time, when you are trying to fill those positions, you're bringing, bringing people, the last thing you want to think about it, you know, in your agenda, okay, now it's time to train them for security. So you look at it as something I can do later. And this is will be an opening for the, the hackers. The hackers, they know that the, the school district, uh, they're not, you know, an IT savvy, every single person in them. Uh, they, they're not protecting the, the servers with so much of the hardware and the software. We see it in the financial or the other organizations. So it's a soft uh, target for them. Yeah, I mean, this is just such an interesting story. We'll see, you know, if there's any more details that, that come to light. But that was the latest that we got, that uh, the hackers did not obtain large amounts of data, uh, although uh, we heard in Hal Eisner's report uh, about how much was taken. I think that is a lot. Uh, so, uh, Professor Bernava, we do appreciate your time, and we'll talk again. Thanks so much. Thank you.